welcome to another episode of the diplomats where my good buddies in their wife beater shirts audacious yeah. hand and superstition will be going oh. ahead and talking about the fall 1907 the momentous fall 1907 of the spring uh of the season five nexus finals sorry fall of the season five nexus finals brought to you by diplomacybriefing.com where you can get all the latest information on diplomacy it's totally free sign up at diplomacybriefing.com all right fellas before we talk about the fall moves my little suggested retreat of germany to Helgoland did not happen it went it went to denmark i think audacious you uh and superstition both predicted that yeah well i said he had a lot of options but he'd probably go to denmark and i think stitches was a little more forceful about it if i recall hell was a very good defensive position but i feel like with denmark he can cover his center and still break support if he needs to so i think it was a good move exactly yeah and so we had a lot of number of predictions for fall 1907 just quickly we will show you that lady razor had a little <laughs> little cartoon against germany from france which was kind of funny and then i couldn't figure this one out as i thought this might be an allusion to uh the good dog and the bad dog we've got yeah. the russian dog the turkish uh, dog and the italian dog and yeah. it looks like it's austria walking the dogs yep. yeah that's i think that lazy Ra lady razor might be uh one of our you know two to one listeners um and uh this is a shout out to us so thank you thank you for listening yeah he's he's, he's got uh turkey as the biggest dog <laughs> i think that's just a function of the breeds that are represented yeah. <laughs> okay not a lot of turkish dogs yeah what are <laughs> what are the breed stitches there's a Tur turkish mastiff a borzoi and an italian greyhound there we go yeah. Ah, Piggies are yeah. like small grounds. It's like a little of the grounds. All right. We had the momentous fall 1907 moves, some of which we predicted, some of which we did not. So let's try and be more coherent this time, fellas. Uh, Go everywhere. <laughs> let's start it in the north. We're going to give this one to superstition for saying he really wanted Russia to support England into St. Petersburg. And it happened. Yeah, I just, I love this move. Um, it stops Germany from growing and it allows Russia to recapture St. Petersburg later because there's no reason England's going to stay there. It just needs the dot for that turn because Norway's lost. Um, I really, really like the St. Petersburg move. Um, you're looking at Germany trying to do double support into Norway. So there's nothing he could really do about that. The retreat to Denmark allowed him to break support from North. So there was no option to save Norway. Well, I, well, yeah, but I think Norway, I mean, can be retaken now. Yeah. So this is uh i'm just grateful that russia helped somebody for a change granted it's going to help him in the long run but it was a good move hand well yeah i agree i mean i've been saying this for a while but if you're going to lose st petersburg having a fleet grounded on the north coast is best case scenario um i will say you know when i look at this map and i see that neither finland nor livonia has ever been occupied it really speaks to the kind of tactical uh germany just walked through there well the morning was occupied it was, oh it was yeah going to st pete right right finland has never been occupied just speaks to the kind of like, tactical vacuousness of the north um it's never really been too exciting to me up there um yeah, I, I, I suppose it was a good move. Uh, you know, I will say Russia, by dislodging that army, that army goes back to Livonia. It looks like Germany did trust Russia to some extent. Um, and now Russia is going to have to deal with that 
army in Livonia, which is going to cause them some headaches, I think. Well, I'm not sure. It could go to Finland, and it could it could, it could, it could, it could yeah, save Norway. That's, that's a headache, too, though. Finland, that's why I'm really surprised Finland's never been occupied, because Finland is, as I said before, it's the ultimate guerrilla warfare tile of the north, because you can access, if you put an army there, you can access all the other tiles up there. You can really drive your opponents crazy from there, so that would be a good option, too. If he goes um, to Finland, he can support Norway, and it can't get cut from North Coast. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that would uh, be a good retreat too. Either one would be good to me. It really depends on what he wants to prioritize. But I like I like England. I mean, I like England getting in in Norwegian. Well, he should have known that he's going to tap Norwegian, so that's that was a given. It just depended on what unit he wanted to take it with. I'm a little surprised he couldn't bring himself to vacate St. Petersburg to Norway. Yeah. With Swedish support. I just it looks to me like he didn't expect Russia to betray him. Why anyone would expect Russia not to betray them at this point, I don't know. But um yeah, that's what it looks like to me. It looks like Russia took him unawares to some extent. All right. Uh, let's let's now sort of move to the west here. Uh, another superstition correct call. France is out. Uh, yeah, uh, Italy walked through Spain. I think I got that one into Portugal, mm -hmm. and then you correctly surmised that uh, the deal for that was Brest. Yep. It keeps England afloat, and, you know, Italy still grows. France isn't going to be useful because they're always going to want to come back to their home center, so they're not going to want to play very far. And Germany's already being pushed out of France, so there's not real much use for France anymore. It, what What is interesting is that France is, saw the writing on the wall and says, well, you're not having Paris then. So that was a good F you to Italy. Like, well, if I'm out, then you're not going to grow. So... It gives Germany a little bit of flexibility. Um, they well, have... I think Germany would have kept Paris no matter what, right? Because no. technically, no. Paris cut. You can't I mean, cut Paris. Your you can't cut support to yourself. Yeah, you can't cut support to yourself. That was definitely no. But Belgium moved to Burgundy. Yeah. So yeah. yes, Belgium would have taken Burgundy, and Burgundy would have taken Paris had France not cut the, that support. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Yeah. And I, I, know the I rules. love that too, you know, can we just give just one, you know, last dirge uh, to, uh, to, to uh, Doc here? You know, he, he died here with his middle finger up in the air. Um, just one last, <laughs> one last fuck you to his enemies. Uh, and, you know, it really, it's a, such a minute play, but it might have an effect on the outcome of this game just insofar as to me Italy is playing a really dangerous game you know he has that leverage over England by sitting in the English channel uh, meanwhile you know England's probably going down to the cellar of resentment and putting you know putting away the bottles uh the longer you you know this from experience Ed right you know, <laughs> yeah, all someone, sits, well. someone sits in the English Channel and, and the rage builds. <laughs> um, and and honestly, like he, he's playing a dangerous game insofar as he he's giving England these builds. He's being really slow about his movement into the Atlantic and England is, is going to he has enough fleets up there that he's really could threaten uh, Iberia and Italy's kind of throwing away possible gains uh, in the Northwest. Um, you know, it's hard to fall Italy's game because he's doing really well, but it's, he's kind of, it's a bit of a tight rope he's walking there. I can see Italy or England and Germany making up soon now that Germany's pushed away from England completely. England can refocus on taking the channel and getting its sovereignty back. All right, well, help me figure out the board here. Uh, England gets Brest and St. Petersburg loses Norway, so England will get a build. Is that right? Yep. England builds what? 
he's going to build in London, I, you know, a fleet most likely. And that's what I'm saying is that Italy's been using that leverage, but now that England has a build, um, that leverage is greatly diminished. Germany loses rest gains Norway. So I'm at no build. No build. No builds. Italy here, which we haven't gone over all the Italian moves, looks like loses Greece, mm-hmm. gains Portugal. Portugal. Loses chance. And it's flat. Yeah, what does it uh so Italy can't build? Yeah, but this band. Yeah. They lost two centers. Where's the other? Trieste. Trieste. Oh, yeah. Okay, disband. Ouch. Yeah, that's, I think they're banking on Paris. They weren't expecting France to uh... <laughs> Yeah. What's that's that what disband? What would have been the best move is for him to hold in Spain because then the French, you know, would have to move to Picardy and it'd still be far enough away. But... What what is that disband? I'm sure England's gonna be pushing for channel. <laughs> yeah. Which I wouldn't do. No. Because you need that. You need that to that to fight Germany. I mean you might push for Portugal. So you don't have to worry about Spain if you're England unless you worry about Gascony. Yeah, that's gonna be a tough negotiation because if you're Italy, you'd rather, I think, disband one of the fleets in the east. All right, so let's look at these Italian moves. Uh, France got him uh, so where he doesn't get Paris. What do you make of this curious bounce in Tyrolia between Germany and Italy, uh, and uh, Austria? In... Yeah, I didn't understand that too. I thought there was a lot better things Munich could do. Um, and I'm not too sure why that happened at all. Could have dislodged Burgundy. Yeah. I think that was negotiated probably between Germany and Austria. It had to have been, is my suspicion. Yeah, I think that was that was negotiated. They wanted to keep hmm. I guess they wanted to make sure that Tyrol would not support Russia into Vienna. Or vice versa. I don't know. Maybe is this the break support? Right, so they're 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 keeping the position while um, or Brady. keeping Tyrol from supporting Burgundy and Munich, but Trieste did not want to move, so I guess they arranged a balance for mutual support. I mean, it could be also that Austria. Yeah, that Austria kind of had a complex staging of events here. I mean. The only thing about Germany's move that makes me think that he didn't expect Austria to move there is that um, he tried to follow Munich uh, with Silesia. Um, I still think Germany did not expect Russia to betray him. I agree there. uh, It wasn't a mutual balance. I think they both wanted to break support with Imperolia just because, and it just happened. (laughs) They mutually bounce. Yeah. I don't think it was planned. Hmm. Yeah, that one's a toughie. I think Austria, I think Austria might have asked Germany to break the support, and then he also moved there on purpose. <laughs> but we'll see. I don't know. Why would you leave Trieste though? Why don't you try for Venice or something? Well, because you know that if you know that Russia's moving there, you just do it so that you ensure that the support is broken in case Germany lies. Uh, but then you also know that you're going to likely bounce. It's true, yeah. Okay. Uh, there's so much to talk about, but here we have to assume Austria has clearly betrayed the deal with Russia, right? That there I, is look- no move to Romania. It looks to me that he promised Italy and Russia Bulgaria. 
to me. Yeah. This is the return. This is the return of the Austria that I knew and loved. I'm so glad to see this. Look at the audacity of this move. He left, he didn't even cover Budapest. He went for the G spot in Galicia. I just want to say that I did say that Budapest didn't have to be covered because Bulgaria was enough temptation for Russia. Mm -hmm. (laughs) No matter, you know, we can try to spin this as much as we want, but we were all killing him. We were all killing him last turn. Even me, who probably was the biggest Austria booster through much of his game, was killing him. And then gotta love him. He made the comeback. Didn't just make the comeback, but more importantly, he made the comeback in style. He got revenge. He, he just emerged, emerged from the knife fight, covered in blood, you know, holding the scalps of his enemies. Uh, it's just beautiful, and he has a great chance to win this now. Um, well, and he's going to get a build in Budapest and a, and a build in pocket. Oh, two builds. He'll get in Vienna also because he took Galicia. Right. He even vacated uh, – Vienna, he risked that too. He, you know, he could have lost that to Italy. He risked everything and he gained everything. And he has, you know, one of my favorite fetish tiles in Galicia. Um, he revenged himself on Russia. He revenged himself on Italy. Um, With Russia, if I'm not reading this wrong, two disbands. That's correct. Yep. What on earth does Russia do at this point? Disband Moscow, I guess? And disband Silesia? The fleet. The fleet. The fleet has to go. Has to. Yeah. And uh, Moscow. Unless he, unless he retreats to Livonia. I wouldn't. You, you guys think he should disband Moscow? Depends on the German retreat. If he goes to Finland, maybe, maybe not. Right, yeah. I don't know. I like Moscow. It gives you flexibility to move different places. It does, but right now he's got two build Austria that's in Galicia right now. So mm-hmm. he might need that unit. Because if Germany goes to Livonia, he's going to need Moscow. Yeah. But if yeah. not, it might I be. Will, I will say I didn't see this move from Austria over Bulgaria. So Austria. It's not hard to figure out a better player, but I did sort of predict that, or not predict, but at least say that Khan could move to Smyrna supported by Ankara. No. Which no. makes the big winner of 1907 who? Turkey, double to centers. I think <laughs> Turkey and Austria, in a sense, but I, I'm not going to let you take credit for this because I'm going to. I'm going to do a little uh, dramatic reading from my private chat with Ed. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Five minutes before adjudication. Let me find this. Uh, uh, that's loading. Let's see <laughs> it. Let's see it. Okay. <clears throat> I write, adjudication in five minutes. Let it be known that all caps, I predict conk gets a build. All lowercase... You know, just a kind of matter of the fact, subdued tone. Ed says, I predict elimination. <laughs> and I say, Austria will move to the Black Sea and a shining new fleet will appear in Khan. I did not predict Austria's specific move, but a shining new fleet will appear in Constantinople. And then responding to the Ed, I say, fine, play the odds. I put a little emoji of someone sleeping to indicate how boring Ed's prediction is. And then write, some of us would rather disappear audaciously under the tumultuous waves and storm clouds of fate, which I think is a good rendition of, of, of Conk's appeal to the people. Um, uh, he is the people's to... choice. Uh, I, I, I had lost faith in him, yeah. but uh, I've been proven wrong, thank God. So I'm very happy for him. What does he well, build? I say later. Does he build that shiny fleet? I say later, and I think that – well, we'll see about that. But I do say later that I am going to come to your residence, and you are handing over your Conch's number one fan T-shirt. That's and my favorite part. part. <laughs> yeah. Con- the Conch's number one, number one fan T-shirt is mine now. I'm sorry, Ed. I'm sorry. Okay, well, then I'll be Austria's number one fan. 
I get that one too. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say this is the first Austrian set that I really liked. Most of the moves were just a little bit too much, even though they're entertaining. I just didn't like them. But I like Do we think one. Russia told Austria to move to Bohemia? Probably. Yeah. He, I don't think he would have evacuated. I think they negotiated a neutral uh, Galicia, but um, yeah, Austria looked like he double-crossed everyone this turn. It was amazing. Well, he may have double-crossed. I mean, that may have been why Munich moved to Tyrolia. He was concerned about Tyrolia, Bohemia, Silesia. That's probably it. That's probably it. And um, that would be funny if Russia thought they could get Austria to go to Bohemia again. <laughs> well, the, the the thing is, I'm not 100% sure of all this because Vienna may have moved to Galicia because they were worried about the German retreat. Uh, you, you No, I think this is a Bruce Lee roundhouse kicked by like the bloodied and scarred veteran. Um, this is the Austria I know and love. This is just my profound re-evaluation of Austria's brilliance vindicated. Um, this is beautiful. I love the risks he takes. I love the brinkmanship. I love the fact that, you know, he has been wounded by everyone and fights on. Um, it's Austria's just got too much going on to protect Russia right now. And after it tried to last time, I can't- If imagine. I'm not mistaken, Austria has had at one point every home center occupied by a foreign power. Correct. That's correct. And now has them all back. Yep. Which is pretty amazing. <clears throat> the best part is, is that I, you guys do realize that Conk could, you know, we're getting close to the end. Conk could just give Austria the victory this game, <laughs> which I would actually love. I would love to see the umbles of the world just shit their pants and that that happened um knowing Kong that could have been his pitch so yeah I'll have or, or Kong could Kong, or Kong could take it out on Austria for betraying him first a long time ago so I was actually thinking about this before the podcast and maybe you guys can help me I was so at this point, you know, the sellers are beginning to be open, the sellers of resentments, and people are kind of perusing their bottles full of hatred and deciding upon a drink for the evening. So who has wounded Conk the worst? Let's just play this game. What is Russia? Russia just would not work with them under would any circumstances. With, under any opportunity, the drug would have been great for he, both of them. Yeah, so Russia targeted him mercilessly. He moved to the black with the kind of uh, obsessive kind of determination over and over again. Uh, so there's that. Austria, you know, kind of roped him in or allowed him to pull off this kind of audacious move where he convoys Bulgaria to straight into Naples. Um, but then reverses and then attacks him. Um, so there was that. I mean, what's worse, the kind of the the, the dramatic, uh, you know, the dramatic wounds that's inflicted upon you, or the small, you know, needling the the noose that is slowly tightened. I, I personally dislike the noose that is slowly tightened more. Um, and then I was thinking, what what has Italy really done to Austria? I mean, well, Italy's done nothing to Turkey. I mean, sorry, to Turkey, that's what I mean. What, how is, has Italy- Italy helped him into Greece. Italy kept him alive. Right, so, you know, even though in a sense it looks like Conk will maybe throw the game to Austria, I mean, and here we can get into Conk's meta, right? He had a little uh, spat with our friend Umbel uh, in, in public chat, uh, and he says, uh, I believe Conk said, uh, I, I give things to people that are nice to me, you know, to which, of course, Umble responded with the typical, very unfunny gif that's like poorly edited and just made himself more hateable than ever. Man, uh, you're so harsh on Umble. He's just, yeah. You know, I like the things that gif. 
Oh, is it GIF? <laughs> no, it's GIF. It's pronounced GIF. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care either. either. Anyway, the point is, uh, you know, you know, and also Conk also releasing. I don't know if you guys saw, but right before adjudication, he puts up his own. You know, he's getting into the lame uh, GIF GIF game and puts up <laughs> Scarface putting himself face first into a pile of cocaine and lighting up his shotgun. I really respect people who will do that. Will actually put that up shortly before adjudication like it's so much more ballsy than doing it afterwards um so yeah i mean conk with the meta game uh giving us the people a little bit of delight um but yeah i mean i think you know if, if you if i think if we were going to take a little stroll through conk's you know seller of resentment um you know i think the finest bottles are are those marked Russia and uh, Austria, and to that end, I think maybe Italy might be the one to benefit from this, but we'll see. Yeah, it's true because uh, he has nothing to lose. I mean, Italy are, might help him. The only argument against that is he did move to the south coast, and now he's going to have a fleet in Constantinople, and Austria is in Smyrna, so it. I mean, from a position standpoint, it looks like a bunch of fleets arrayed against Italy. Um, it also continues this hilarious trend in the East that fleets just always are in ports and never seem to be able to get out to the open ocean. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, from that thought exercise, you know, I think Conk might, if he is going to decide this game, kind of go for Italy. Okay. Uh, who? So, is it tied between Austria and Turkey for best season? Um, or best movement for the fall? I mean, it's I mean, hard to get Turkey props for moving one, or not moving at all. <laughs> he moved to Greece. Oh, he moved to Greece. Yeah. Just, I don't know. I mean. To me, the Turkish moveset is part of Austria, so it's hard yeah. to pull them apart. I suppose so. I mean, there's it's just two different things. If, if, you know, Austria is in a position. He goes from dead man walking to a contender. Um, he took incredible risks, which I always love. Um, He's playing to win. And, and he took incredible risks. He's doing it in style. Um, Turkey is just kind of a different story. It's kind of the comeback story, um, the man of the people, uh, the sultan with the biggest turban, um, Conk the Magnificent. It's just a different kind of, different tale being woven. But I agree, the, the, their fate is intertwined at this point. Also, what a story between them. Loved and lost and loved again. Exactly. All right, you got to go with worst season fall uh, to Russia. To Russia. Yeah. He lost two. I mean, it. despite the great moveset to St. Petersburg, I mean, it still netted him a loss. Where did he go from here? But, yeah, because... this is about Austrian allies going to hurt a lot. Even though Germany is pretty much demilitarized. Um, Romania is gone. Went right through him. He has no friends. You know, I, I think Russia's big mistake is that, so his style was this kind of, you know, going limp and letting people forget that he existed and forget that he is perhaps the best known, more, most successful online player out there. Um, and then, but once he sprung into action, I don't think that you could go back to playing dead which is what he kind of tried to do in this last turn by just supporting everything and, and uh, keeping his options open. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Austria went down, got a fine bottle of, you know, hatred for Russia, brought it up and poured himself a glass um, and just went for it. You know, well, and Austria just, Austria just outplayed him. Austria just outplayed him. What hurts is all the Italian armies are in France. There's nothing to help Russia out of this. 
Right, and and Russia totally left, just hung Italy out to dry too last turn when Italy was taking all the risks fighting Germany and just sat there and supported themselves. Uh -huh. That was Italy. The same thing to France. Yeah, he, yeah, he did. He's done that to everyone. I, you know, I'm not counting him out, right? I'm not counting him out because every time he's in a pinch, it seems like everyone moves away from him, but it's, it's going to be tough for him. I mean, the, 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 the fleet disband is, the fleet disband doesn't actually hurt him uh, simply because there's not even a fleet that is threatening to go into the Black Sea, but that second disband is going to be, going to be a tough one. I guess it's Silesia. It yeah. has to be. Yeah, I think so. Most likely. And he just, you know, roll, shows Germany his belly and hopes that Germany is merciful. Okay. Let's, do some, let's do some grades. Germany's grade. For the year, not just for the season. For the year. <sighs> I mean, I'm gonna give him. I mean, I give him a B. He's still at nine centers. He's still leading. I mean, he's just like treading water at this point. Um, I mean, he did kind of foolishly trust Russia this turn, but in the end, he was right in the sense that Russia was a bit foolish to overextend and attack him. Um, so yeah, I give him a B. He's 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 uh. You know, he's not climbing, he's not crashing, he's kind of maintaining. Well, let me ask you this. He's got France to save Paris. Let, let me ask yeah. you this. Any chance the leisure retreats to Prussia, St. Petersburg retreats to Livonia? There's a chance. That's why I said it all really depends on retreats and what, how good a position Russia's in. I mean, because if the is dis. Well, I guess we have to see what the retreats are, but that could put a lot of pressure on Russia. Uh -huh. I just don't. I think that with uh, with Russia's ability and his uh, pharmacy of substances that he seems to be able to put in everyone's drinks, um, and also with with Germany under pretty significant pressure uh, in the West, I think that uh, Russia will manage to. You know, use that disband in Silesia uh, as an act of goodwill and um, kind of make some kind of peace with, with Germany in the East. That would be my guess. I don't think that Germany will retreat in, in an insanely aggressive way. All right. So the grade uh, superstition for Germany. B. I agree. I agree on a B. England. I love taking that support to St. Petersburg. Um, he tried for a low hands dot that worked too. Um, he got Italian support in the breast. He got Italy to leave Spain. Those are all the moves I thought was going to make a, a great Italian English alliance. Um, I give him an A. He's, he's growing. He's, he's coming back. He's vacated everything but the channel. So, not bad. And he kept, he kept the North Sea. Yep. Yeah, he has both the Norwegian and North Sea. Um, still doesn't have the English channel back. You know, what I admire about England is his tenacity. You know, um, he got stabbed. Uh, that stab that Ed was hungering for, that he celebrated um and that now just doesn't look quite as quite as wonderful as it initially seemed um but the the reason why i'm going to give england is a b which is again the same reason i have been kind of giving him b's is this is a great turn for him in terms of he has a build in london and he's relieving the leverage that italy has over him it's just to me he's still kind of He's being moved by the circumstances rather than by an overarching plan. Um, you know, he's acting according to the plans of others. Uh, so, I mean, how much credit can I give him? And I'll give him a B plus just because of the, the results. The results are good, but you know, he might be he might have copied uh, from the test that was next to him.
I can't think of a move he made that I wouldn't have made. But. A plus plus for England. God. A plus plus. Hey. Look, what more could he have done? Nothing. He he did a perfect year. Perfect year. You know what? He could have uh, got England or Germany not to take Norway. <laughs> yeah. That's that's about the only better op- option he could have made. Um, I don't know. I mean, he, to me, he's Italy's vassal still. Um, also, I agree. You no know, such thing as an A plus plus. I'm just like, how many A plus pluses is Ed going to give out? It's just driving me crazy. But I'm yeah, just using that now. <laughs> <laughs> You're just as many as I want to. Italy. We basically called Italy the winner just two days ago, and now. It was a great move set. Um, he just got played, I think. It's bad. <laughs> yeah. When France saw the writing on the wall, Austria played him. He still has a, I mean, he's still in a really good position, and this is for the entire year. I'm going to give him an A minus in the sense that, so there, are, well, I mean, yeah, let's take him down a grade just to acknowledge Doc's just legendary middle finger it you know i would love to put this you know do, are you guys familiar with the medieval uh, monstrous i believe it's called no it's a it's a kind of a, a medieval artifact where you would take the you know like the finger clippings of the saint or something like that and you would put it in a golden vessel that was in the shape of that body part um and i think that you know when we parade doc's dead body through the streets and you know, send him off to the next world. We should make just a golden, you know, middle finger out with little trimmings of his fingernail inside and, and venerate him just one last time because he really, he really like managed to screw Italy as much as he could with the single move here. Um, but in spite of that, right, Italy still has that reservoir of Spain. Um, he still has, like as I said, uh, you know, even though, Turkey did take Greece from him and I you know and and who could fault him you know who could fault Conk the Magnificent for wanting a build in Constantinople um I still do think that Italy must still have the some kind of amount of goodwill for being the only person who hasn't screwed him over um I I still would say Italy has perhaps the best chance of winning this game just insofar as when I look at the centers that you know he he with France gone, he will take Paris now. Um, Superstition, right. great for Italy. B plus. The hard part is that he had a lot of opportunities to grow here. Um, he could have easily just taken Brest for himself. Um, he could have taken Spain and Portugal. And, and what hurts me is that not that the moves were bad, it was just because he he got a disband and for the life of me i can't really see something i would want a disband on this board at all um but i would agree with it a b plus just because he has a disband um and i would say an ally in england is a little bit more important than getting that extra center but um yeah the, the greece betrayal or the bulgaria betrayal whatever one i guess they're hand in hand uh definitely hurt a lot I would say just disband the Aegean Sea. You can just sit in Ion and in the Ionian Sea and just kind of seal up the east. There's not really enough going on for them to break through there. Um, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. It really, hilariously enough, it does. There is an element that he, he, if he can get Turkey back on board with him, that that could really change things. I got to give him a B minus because I really like how things went in the spring, but I think he sealed his fate this year by not building that army in Venice. Uh, uh, I think he prioritized Greece over Trieste, which I think ended up being a strategic mistake. Who am I to judge? But I do like the fact that he got England as an ally. Uh ally of necessity for both of them at this point so uh 
but I can't call what happened in 07 a success. He's disbanding. He's going to be weak, really weak somewhere at this point. Well, and I think he was going to lose to us anyways, just because there was triple support on it or yeah. triple attack. But um, he would have been able to use Tyrolia better against Germany if he wanted to. Yeah. And yeah, it would have gave him something. I don't know. I mean, I just dis I disagreed with him taking Trieste that second time to begin with, and I think we're seeing like a cascade of effects from that decision. Um, now we're into Austria's cellar of resentment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> quite, quite a, quite a a, a uh, sprawling and labyrinthian center, isn't it? Uh, cellar, isn't it? Um, I feel like it even has multiple levels. You know, you have the kind of top level. It's just a kind of nice aristocratic wine scent like cellar, but as you go down, you start to see like skeletons chained to the wall. Um. <laughs> okay, Russia's great. Oh, D. I mean, D. He just. I think Russia here was a victim of certain. I think he just he a little bit a uh, little bit of narcissism, a little bit of believing he can just talk his way out of anything, and which he, he he can. He has talked away his way out of almost every pinch he's been in. But I mean, after you do a grind stab on someone and you walk into two of their home centers, are they really going to part go to Bohemia and participate in an all-out attack on Germany, which they were already willing to do at one point? And you stab them. I. I mean, maybe he just was shooting a shot. Maybe this was him. Like I've said this before, I think I think that Village Idiot is a different kind of player than we've kind of seen here. Like he would rather just coil until the very end, and he's just been a victim of circumstance to some extent. But yeah, I think also just his cautious nature can't fathom someone like Austria who just will leap across, you know, the chasm of uncertainty just with like, you know, vigor and power. You know, he just, there's a way in which they're just such different players that he just can't fathom that Austria would take this big a risk. Um, you know, and he okay. ends up with- Okay, yeah. superstition. Uh, I'm gonna give it a C just because I think that had Austria supported him in Bulgaria, everything looked about right for an Austro Russia Russo alliance. Um, I'm going to sound a little bit hypocritical because yeah. for the one time that he needed to be defensive, he was completely offensive and it backfired in him. So love the St. Petersburg move though. But yeah, I would say a C. He just got played. I just, I also have to note, I mean, God, if I just, I just wish I could taste the, the, the wine of hatred that Austria is sipping on because we all killed, we killed Austria for the fact that Russia talked him into going out of position to attack Germany and then Austria and then takes Galicia and then his home centers and Austria now just did the exact same thing to him. You I know? feel like they're playing ping pong with an Austrian grenade and it just went off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just like, I got everything back. Yeah, a little, a little badminton with the, uh, with the grenade, yeah. Uh, all right, so... The whole game, Russia's been Didalius in the in the myth of Icarus and Didalius. And this time, though, quest, unquestionably, he's Icarus. And hand, I'm sorry, but it's an F minus minus for Russia. Okay, this is this is, this the first is just double a, minus. Oh my god. F minus minus. This is a failed. He's failed. He's failed in diplomacy. He's he he's he. He could, it's, his, it's just the biggest failure possible. His game is, I can't see how he recovers. The game is lost for Russia. This was, this was the moment. Um, and ironically, you know, yeah, I mean, what is the, what's the tie, is, is it still that the highest seed wins the tiebreaker in the final? It's the Paris method, so whoever picked their senders first. Whoever what? Whoever picked their country first. So Austria is actually third seed, I believe. 
and they picked second. They picked second to last, so that's why they got Austria. They could have picked a better country. So Austria mm-hmm. got the tiebreaker on everybody but France and Germany. So the lower you picked, the higher on the tiebreaker you are. Correct. And when the and oh yeah, so yeah, then Russia. I think Russia's only chance would be like a tiebreaker. Like if you end up with a bunch of people at seven or something like that. Um, so the only the people tiebreaker. Austria- Russia is at four. Okay, there's no. It's not going to get in contention. He's not going to get seven. He's not going to get eight. And Austria is mean, seven right now. That's true. I mean, well, we'll see though. I mean, he just he does have that silver tongue, but it does look like that Austrian uh, bulldog is locked jawed onto his throat. An- Anchor is moving to Armenia. No. Anchor is yeah. gonna. I mean, this is this is death. Yeah, it's it's very. You know, I, I just don't really like counting anyone out. Um, but it's not looking good. You know, it's so funny though how just one move can really linger. Like I think that his retreat to Smyrna instead of the Black Sea really cost him a lot. Just it's funny a simple retreat can change the game. He got greedy and he just wanted to kneecap Austria um, at the time. And it didn't work out for him. Okay, Austrian and Turkish grades. I cannot uh, give another A plus plus out. There's only one A plus plus. So there's no such thing as an A plus plus. Um, I'm giving them. I'm going to give. I'm definitely giving Austrian A. I am Austrian. You know, it's so funny. I don't know who to love. There's three powers I really love. I love, uh, he might have been demoted back to Poser Tom from Authentic Tom this turn. But on a personal level, due to my own experiences with him, I love Italy. In terms of just uh, kind of narcissistically seeing myself in the person's moves and just loving their style, it's Austria. And then in terms of the kind of like narrative and, and, the, and the, 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 the mythic kind of arc of their tale, it has to be Turkey. Um, so hard for me, to, for me to choose between those three. Um, I'm going to give Austria an A, that's for sure. Um, I love the risks he took. I love just the audacity of his move. Um, and I'll give Turkey, I'm going to give Turkey an A too. I mean... You know, Conk the Magnificent is about to build in Constantinople. Um, And not only that, but if you're not going to win a game deciding the winner and infuriating infuriating the kind of player that you dislike (laughs) is a great consolation prize. And I'm happy. I'm happy for Conk, too. So they both get A's. They both get A's, and, and as you guys know, an A is a very good grade for me. Superstition. I'm going to give uh, Turkey an A. I mean, getting a build is so unlikely. Um, it, it's just got to be 100% the best move he could make is to take a center and have a build. Um, I'm going to give Austria an A- minus just because – I think he could have made the same moveset with Ankara to Smyrna, just fine, and shut out Turkey completely. And still had access to the Constantinople, which is a good fleet position. Yeah, but what about the story? <laughs> Come it's on. a great Turkish story. <laughs> yeah, and you want to be part of that. It's not. Austria it's gets Austria. an A. Nobody, I've not given this guy any faith the whole game he keeps proving me wrong he definitely gets an a i'm really impressed turkey a plus 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 oh my god he's teaching the class that's the highest grade on the ed sullivan meter is the a plus 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 rank s <laughs> a to the fourth power oh my god I remember I took a literature class once and I got 100% on a paper and it's funny because you think I would be happy at getting 100% but I just lost respect for the professor immediately because I was like how 100% should not be possible on a qualitative subject. Um, Yeah, 
I, I agree with your sentiment, though. I agree with your sentiment. Okay, uh, predictions for 08. Four moves left. Oof. Are we talking about the retreat or the spring? The spring. There's so many good retreats. It really depends on where everything goes. Yeah, we should. I think we should uh, predict retreats and then maybe do a little mini late night episode on our predictions after that. Because... All right. So Russia retreats or disbands? Oh, I hadn't thought about the disbands. Uh, hmm. I don't know why it would disband early. That doesn't make yeah. any sense. Yeah. Unless he's trying to send a strong signal to someone. Um, well, it can only move to eastern Med or Syria. So where does it go? Well, it would, Mediterranean. It, would, it would move to the eastern Med, but there is a, the argument for the disband would be there's actually quite a lot of fleets arrayed against Italy right now with Turkey and Austria and Austria not being in the Black Sea, but being in Smyrna. So if he's really trying to send a strong signal to Italy that like, look, I'm sorry I hung you out to dry. Let's be friends again. He might disband that. That could be an argument for that. Um, that being said, Italy has a disband too, so maybe Russia keeps its fleet so Italy gets popped up. I mean, that's the weakest point that you can take out yeah. in Austrian centers because right now there's going to be a line of Austrian armies against yours. Um, yeah. That's the best way to break it is to help Italy in. I mean, Romania is in trouble too. In a lot of trouble. Yeah. Uh, I just, I just love what Austria. I just can't say it enough. I just love this, this blood-soaked, creative, dynamic mind that's behind. Okay, me. we get it. The German uh, retreat. Sorry, sorry. sorry. I think the Russia. Legion, has we get it. We get it. We get it. You're, you're, you're into. You're an Austria porn fan. Uh, he's giving it all to you. The German retreats. <laughs> Saint Petersburg and Silesia. Finland and Berlin. Oh, Bohemia. Prussia, Livonia, what happens? I would say Finland and Berlin. I'm, you know, unless I, I'm going to, you know, there is a world where I would see the Prussia, Livonia, but I think Russia is just not someone who makes himself hateable enough to have that kind of malicious play. Um, I don't of. think Germany wants to see Austria grow anymore. So I don't think he's going to push Russia because where Austria can grow the most. If he retreats there, then Russia does not disband Silesia. Yeah, and it shows his cards. It shows his cards a little too much, and then it risks Berlin, and you don't want an army sliding around your home center. Is I'm, I'm going to say Finland and Berlin for sure. I think if he goes Finland and Berlin, it, it guarantees, or at least highly likely, that Silesia gets disbanded. Yeah. And that fleet remains. Oh, no, he has two disbands, doesn't he? Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Moscow does go. Yeah. No, I can't get anyone on board for Bohemia, right? Uh, then Russia would not uh, disband Silesia. Hmm. No, probably not. I mean, unless. Russia can really paint a target on Austria now. Not really seeing it. His biggest threat, his biggest enemy is Italy right now. And I think the Italy Italo English alliance. You know, England's, there really is a possible, the possibility of England flipping is growing. If I was England, I'd be really eyeing a crushing blow on the coast though which would kind of make me want to continue the campaign against germany um this is more centers there as much as having the mid-atlantic and the iberian peninsula is nice yeah right now to be a contender he's got to take the lowlands in denmark okay am i missing any retreats uh breast just kidding <laughs> oh <Yeah>. that's cold <laughs> oh, uh, no. he still gets a I'm retreat getting... <laughs> I'm giving France an A2. We, you guys didn't grade him, but in death, the Saint Doc of the middle finger gets an A. Yeah. The only move oh, I that's I fair point. I already forgot about him, but he did pull the Braveheart move. Mm -hmm. 
And it really just encapsulates this whole, whole game. Like er, he just was attacked by everyone and made every single defensive stand count. So props to him. Um, yeah, every they, move, the last move where he moved out of breasts, I think was was great. You know, Doc, we respect you, man. If you ever want a little help on your social game, I really recommend Hearts Academy. It's a great institution. <laughs> <laughs> He's an alliance player, so he might be the most heart like on the board. Exactly. Which makes sense. We die fast. All yeah. right. Uh, all <laughs> yeah, right, gentlemen. <laughs> thank you for all your comments on fall 1907. We may do a mini episode on predictions for spring. We're enjoying it much, as you can see. Thanks to diplomacybriefing.com. Thanks to Umble for helping sponsor this uh, podcast. And thanks to our two wife beaters here for their on point analysis.